So you liked our popular how to record your acoustic guitar video at home. Today, Cooper and I are going to show you how to record your electric guitar at home with a bunch of bells, whistles, and tricks that your DAW probably has up its sleeve. So check it out. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to our channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you'd like to support our channel, make sure to visit our Teespring store located below for custom designed t-shirts. Hey, Cooper. How's it going, man? You good, man. Right? Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm excited. We're going to record electric guitar. So if you watched our other video, we showed you kind of step by step how to record an acoustic guitar at home. Uh, showed you all sorts of steps. We're going to be covering a lot of that today because a lot of the equipment is the same. But there is one big stark difference when it comes to dealing with electric guitar. On acoustic guitar, I talked about you could just record it kind of into your phone, right? Can't really do that with electric guitar because there's not a lot of volume. So we are starting with this. So there you go. You're always going to need your quarter inch cable regardless of how you go about it. Now the rest of this is going to differ a little bit. And Cooper, you record at home, right? I do, yeah. This is pretty much exactly what I'm working with. I have myself a MacBook Pro with Logic. I have a Personas uh, interface, and I play a Ultra Jazz Master. There so you go. It's, kind of it's almost like we picked this stuff for a reason. Um, <laughs> but all things being, being serious, you could do this with a variety of different types of gear. What we're going to be showing you today is not the only way to do it. In fact, one of the things we don't have that I'll show you right off the, the top is in our last video, I talked about the fact that if you are just wanting to mess around, record something real simple, maybe lay down an idea with an acoustic guitar, you could do that with your phone. Effectively, you could do something like that even with an electric guitar. There are interfaces on the market uh, from places like, um, I know Apogee has one, IK um, Multimedia I think has one, um, M Audio, I think, has one. These are small little one input devices that allow you to plug basically into like a phone or an iPad and use apps on there like Amplitude, which we'll be talking about, uh, GarageBand, what have you. But if you want to get into more serious recording and be able to really edit and add additional uh, instruments to it and whatnot, you really need to be working on a computer with a digital audio workstation, which is where we've come to today. So as Cooper said, he's got a Fender American Ultra Jazz Master, great guitar. Yep. Um, and I'll say this, I said this in the last video, it needs to be emphasized. Crap in, crap out, okay? You want to use decent stuff. It doesn't matter how good the rest of this is, if the guitar sucks, okay? So if you have a guitar, it doesn't have to be an American Ultra, okay? Don't like, oh, the guitar channel's trying to sell guitars. No, but the truth of the matter is, if you have a guitar with issues, if it's buzzy, if the pickups sound muddy, anything like that, it does. you can only EQ so much. So make sure that you are working with something reliable from the get-go. Just like with an acoustic guitar, it has to be a good sound that you like from the electric guitar. So don't go into this thinking, oh, I can work magic and make it sound like something different. Next, we're going to go from the electric guitar two ways either directly into the interface, in this case it's a uh, Personas Audio Box 96, or you can go into an amp, and we'll, we'll show you what we're talking about. So in our setup today, to show you, we are actually running from the Jazz Master into an AB box that's splitting that signal. That signal is going to our amp in the back. What amp do we use? Have got a Hot Rod Deluxe. That's right. Fender's the best. That's what we use in a lot of our channels. Yeah. This is actually if you don't know, probably one of the most used amps in any backline on any stage anywhere. It's on so many riders, it's ridiculous. Because it's a reliable amp that sounds really good, takes pedals well, all that stuff. So we're running through, the, from the guitar through the AV box, going back to the Fender, and we have a dynamic mic in front of that. That dynamic mic is going into one channel of the Personas, and then the other channel from the AV box is effectively what you'd get if you plug the guitar directly into the interface, mm -hmm. right? Now you said you have a Personas at home, right? I do, yeah. Pretty much the same exact one as this. It's a couple years older, but it's the same exact idea. Um, yeah. And it's perfect, little two channel, one vocal, one, one guitar. And I find that, like you said, using a, a good quality electric guitar, like it really shows when you just run direct, you know? You can get a great direct signal from something like this. It's got great pickups and it's really gonna come across 
as close as possible without using an amp to something that's a beautiful organic signal. Right. You know? yeah. So once we come to the interface, whether it's a Personas or it's a Focusrite or it's Steinberg or Universal Audio, there's so many different examples out there that plug in with Firewire or USB or Thunderbolt, what have you. There's an important step here that we talked about and I want to emphasize again in this video, and that is gain staging. This is an important aspect because it does two things. One, it's a digital uh, analog converter. So it's taking analog signal. Cooper is analog. I'm at analog. The guitar is analog. There's nothing digital, right? So you're taking an analog signal, you're feeding it into this device, and it's converting it into a digital signal that'll come in as a waveform in your digital audio workstation. It's also doing another very important function, and that is that it's handling a preamp stage or a gain stage for your signal. So these knobs here on the front of this are going to allow us to manipulate or control how much input gain from the instrument or from the, the line signal that it's getting is going into our uh, digital audio workstation, our DAW. That's important to understand because you want to set this. We talked about this in the last video. Let's emphasize it for you. There's numerous gain stages going on here. There's one at the guitar. It's the volume knob. That's one gain stage. So you want to set that probably at its highest setting initially in order to check your input levels. Then after you have it plugged in, if it's going direct into the interface, you want to check that you have a good strong signal. Now most interfaces will have some kind of peak meter. It's basically an input meter. It'll show you uh, with green, yellow, and red where you are, and you don't want to be in red because that's distortion. Now, it's electric guitar. We do want distortion, but we don't want that kind of distortion. We want the distortion that comes from a pedal or from the amp or from a plugin that's virtualizing one of those in the system, which we'll talk about. So what you want to do is you want to have good, strong input signal. And, and the advice I typically give is somewhere between negative 10 and negative 6 dB. And that's what you can read on the meter, and that's what you can see in the DAW as well. A lot of people think it's zero. It's not. Zero is peaking in a DAW. Okay? It's not like a mixing board where you have some level set zero and you have more room above it. You don't want it hitting zero. So look at and set it to at your highest volume, peaking at around negative six, maybe negative two at the very, very most. If you do that at the guitar with full volume, then if you play with dynamics, if you roll it back a little bit, you know you're not going to exceed your volume levels, okay? So you set the gain there, you set the gain here, then you come in here and you have a whole nother set of gain stages because you have compressors that come into play. You have uh, input level gains that you can manipulate and you always wanna make sure that you are not in the red because if you're in the red, your sound is dead. You don't want that sound. You want it to have a nice, like you were saying, organic sound to it, okay? So that applies whether we're plugging in direct or we're going through an amp. If you're going through an amp, you have yet another gain stage, right? Here's one gain stage. Back here's another gain stage. Your microphone's proximity to the amp, if you don't understand, acts kind of as a gain stage. The further away or the closer to the center of the cone of the speaker, it will affect the tone and the volume that it gets. And then, of course, your gain stage here before it hits the DAW. Now, if you understand everything we've come to so far, here's where the fun part comes in, right? This, inside the computer, the software you're using is where you're going to capture that sound. Now, we're using Logic. You said you use Logic, right? Yeah. If you own a, an Apple computer or even an Apple iPhone or, or uh, iPad device, you typically have GarageBand for free, which is a stripped down version of Logic. So you have a very basic DAW to work with, which is really cool. But if you don't, uh, or if you don't want to use one of those, most of the time when you purchase a device like this Personas, you get a basic DAW with it. So with Personas, I know they include Studio One with most of their devices, which is a stripped down version of their larger studio uh, DAW. There's um, access to things like uh, Pro Tools, Ableton. There's all sorts of different digital audio workstations out there. Uh, digital Performer, whatnot. It doesn't matter. They all kind of do the same thing. Different interfaces, different preferences, and whatnot. When it comes to electric guitar, and not only electric guitar, but particularly when it comes to electric guitar, here's one of the fun things about doing what we're doing. We're gonna record two different ways here. We're gonna record one way from the amp. What's the benefit of doing that? Beautiful amp tone that's got, you know, all the sound of a Fender amp. 
That's right. Tube tone. You're recording from your amp. It's the sound that you like. It's also the gear you're familiar with. And so if you have a pedal board and you have an amp, you can put a mic in front of that, you can capture that, and you can get that sound into your recording. Um, now you can then take and you can manipulate that with dynamic control, like compression, um, not a compressor pedal, but compression to the overall signal. You can deal with EQ on it. You can affect it with a lot of different plug-in effects. But if you're recording direct, we don't have an amp, right? We're just going directly into it. Here's where plugins come into play. In a digital audio workstation like Logic, and there's others out there, you have access to virtualized instruments, but also virtualized amps and pedals. So in this particular case, what we're going to show you is how you can take what is effectively just a dry signal and you can record it using some built-in virtualized amp. And here's an interesting thing. You ever look at those very popular or ever increasingly popular um, kind of amp virtualization tools that are on the market mm -hmm. that you have like you have the, the boards that will create any virtual amp you can think of yeah right there's all sorts of different ones out there they can handle your pedals they can handle your amps all of that originated here in professional studios around the world and i i've told you this i actually for years played on stages without an amp i use main stage which is a kind of a live version of logic through a pedal that acted as an interface for my guitar. I didn't have an amp, I didn't have pedals. It was all on my computer screen. And you know what? I got a really good sound out of it. Yeah. Worked really well. There's a reason I went back to a tube amp and pedals. It didn't have anything to do with sound. It had to do with other preferences. But nevertheless, you have all of the power of the software at your fingertips. And here's the added benefit that we're going to show you. Cooper's going to record, and we're going to record both signals here. We can take the signal that's direct, in other words, the signal that didn't come from the amp, and we can change after the fact on our recording what amp we're using. So one of the secrets in recording studios around the world is if a guitar player comes in in the studio and he lays down a track and they have it set up with like Amplitude's great plugins and it sounds like a, a Marshall amp. And then for the song and the mix, it sounds like, you know what would be better for this? A nice Fender blackface. Well, they can go in and they can change it. And suddenly, he wasn't playing through a Marshall. He was playing through a nice Fender Blackface. So that's the benefit of doing that. And we're going to show you that here through all of this gear we have and the manipulation of amps and pedals in the software. Check it out. OK, so now we're going to record both signals direct at the same time. Cooper through the amp as well as direct into the interface going into Logic. We'll be recording the guitar through a plug-in amp. And then afterwards on playback, we can actually change the amp. We'll show you how. So here we go. So now what we can do is go back and listen to the amp recording and hear how that sounded, but we can also listen to the direct recording using the virtual amp through the plugin. And if we don't like the way that sounds, which is basically using a, a Logic plugin, Blackface, which is some kind of you know, 60s, early 60s Fender amp, we can then change it. And so we'll do that so you can hear what that sounded like both through the recording as well as using something maybe a little bit more Marshall-esque to get an idea of exactly how uh, varied you can get with the sound. So, still recording on here. I'm going to take recording off.
this is the guitar direct through the virtual software. <laughs> So as you can see, we can take the recorded track, and since it went in completely digital, we can have fun with all sorts of different uh, amp combos. We can change the microphone we're using. We can even try different pedals as plugins to affect the sound and really alter the final performance. And that's the ability or the power that you have when you're working with a modern digital audio workstation and plugins going direct with your electric guitar. So there you have it. Recording with electric guitar into a digital audio workstation, either direct or from the amp. What do you do when you're at home? How do you record it? Well, I think uh, when I'm going for something that's going to be a little bit more of a finished product, you know, something that I know that I'm probably going to release. I, I do like how I have my amp set up. I have my pedals and um, I like to use a microphone and I, I just think it gives a tone that maybe I'm more familiar with. But I do use this probably more often then I do that because a lot of time I, I use Logic for more of a songwriting purpose. And I don't know, I mean, you can see on here, you can even use it as like a learning tool for, on Logic you can change the type of mic that you're you know, using to record this type of amp. You can change the placement near the speaker. Um, you can really get somewhat of like a, a digitized version of how it would sound in real life. And so you can learn skills to then apply to more of an analog type performance. But I mean, Logic, the amount of pedals that you can use, I mean, if you write something and you don't own a phaser pedal, but you want to know, hey, I'd, I'd like to hear what that sounds like with a phaser, you kind of have everything in house to where then if you want to go purchase a phaser, you know what it's going to sound like. But I mean, it's, a, it's an incredible tool to just make yourself a more well-rounded songwriter and musician and kind of get to know the equipment without having to be hands-on with, you know, extremely expensive stuff before you take the plunge. I mean, it's yeah, that's an interesting great. point yeah. that I mentioned earlier. I, I used to record with main stage, and okay. I used an Apogee pedal called a Geo. They're still out there. They've been around for a while, and it acted as my interface and allowed me to control main stage and have basically any amp I wanted and any combination of pedals I wanted for a much lower investment. That's why I initially yeah. did it. And they had a lot of fun. And here's the truth. We're getting to a point with both hardware and software where the technology has come along that it's extremely powerful. You can do a lot with it. It's the reason why there's so many professional studios and musicians the world over who are at this point plugging in directly and recording through uh, through Avid's Pro Tools or through Logic, what have you, using things like Amplitude's incredibly robust selection of modeled amplifiers and pedals because they really, really are good. And as we've shown in past videos, even Fender's Tone Master amp shows the power of DSP processing and how realistic something digital can sound now versus maybe 20 years ago. And so the technology has really come a long way and it gives us options. Yeah. I think that's the, the key. It's somewhat like kind of a kid in a candy store kind of feeling when you first dive into a digital audio workstation as well because you start realizing like the possibilities of what you can make are so much wider than you could ever do without something like this just sitting in your bedroom and it's it's really inspiring as like a, a skill to learn as, as well as you know analog playing so yeah. it's very cool. Yeah. Absolutely. So Hey, it, the sky's the limit, so to speak. There really is so many options to what you can do once you just get started diving into this very, very, very deep rabbit hole. And we invite you to come along with us 
crazy people who like doing it. So hopefully this acted as a good kind of intro into what possibilities are out there. I'll tell you, we, we're not spending a whole lot of time trying to master some track here. We're just trying to lay down some stuff and go through really quick and dirty, showing you some of the options that we can go through. But if you'd like more information about how to do this, go to our website, alamomusic.com. We've got a number of articles on there in our what's new section that talks about uh, amps that are available, pedals that are available, interfaces, microphones, the difference between different microphones, all sorts of stuff. And you can chat live with one of our associates who can help you pick out the right gear because that's probably one of the most overwhelming things. It's what do I need? How much do I really need yeah. to spend for what I want to accomplish? And we want to help you do that. So go to our website, alamomusic.com, chat with us, let us help you pick out what you need. We want to help you maximize your creativity in whatever the workspace it is that you are going to be recording in. At the end of the day, the best recorded guitar in the world is the one that you recorded. <laughs> so hopefully this has helped out. Uh, as always, we want to thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe so you see all of the new videos we come out with. We'll see you next time.